The final Crown Jewel event of the Gatorade Cup Series, season number 13, heads to the Darlington Raceway in South Carolina for the running of the Southern 500, one of the biggest races of the season, one of the Crown Jewel races, and all drivers want to win as chase spots are on the line for much of the field here tonight. The points are still very, very close after the final three races of the regular season. Let's take a look at our 42 car starting lineup. On the pole, the 66 of Nottingham Scott. Starting beside him in second, the 42 of Code Luigi. Starting in third, it's Justin Zidell. In fourth, we have Keegan Thompson. And right on the top five, Thompson's teammate, Brett Sierra. Starting in sixth, we have Jonathan Buford. In seventh, it is Riley Cresswell. Eighth place, we have Riley Sampson. In ninth, it's Jeff Bright. In the third, four, Diego Yapez completes the top 10. Back by with 96, Anson Charlbot beside him, the 32 of Derek Campbell. Then there's Jay Reynolds, 53, and Riley's Bridge thrown back to his rookie season in the Gatorade Cup Series. Then there's Max Anderson, the current points leader, beside him, 77, Nathan Baird, along with the 10 of Ross McTrain and the 6 of Evan Hunter. Then there's Sebastian Kukulon and the 88 of Eli Wright, along with the 14, Marshall Burrell, and the 17 of Roman Fenway. Then there's Levi Shelms, the 12, and the 62 of Brandon Beal, along with Luke Rainey, the 2, and the 4 of John Smith. Then there's Jack Delel, the 52, and the double zero, Bibi Ruiz, along with Caden Lynn and Jay Jefferson, the 19. Colin Teague throwing back to Griffin, the championship season back in season six. Kyra Devins, the eight, starts beside him. Then we have the one of Scott Gregory and the 11 of Jake Galloway, along with TJ Hanley and Cody Anderson, the 95. Then there's Bronson to make the three, and the 13, Anthony Harris, comes in third in the point standings. Griffin then thrown back to his rookie season back in season three. To his inside spent Oski the 15 and rang up the field. Max Rossi 81 and 47 Logan Williams round out the 42 car field for racing here at Darlington, the Southern 500. Let's go down tracks and for those famous words to fire these engines up. Forty-two cars are rolling here at Darlington for the fourth crown jewel race of the season, the Southern 500 at Darlington. Many drivers have chase hopes on the line here tonight. Only three racers remain in their quest to make it into the postseason. The top three in points separated by less than 15. The top 10 all close together. The top 20 all close together. It is still anyone's game in terms of making it into the postseason. We'll see who can try and help their case here tonight in Darlington. A long 56 lap race around this 1.33 mile racetrack in South Carolina. Nottingham Scott, Cody to the front row. They come down. The green flag is waving in the air. We're underway from Darlington. for the first time. Nonagan Scott for pole leads the first lap of the Southern 500. Zydell in second, but challenge to the end of the 24 Fred Series number one a Gatorade Cup Series race. Tonight, a great starting spot. Looking to try and get it done. He's up to second in the 24. Looking for the lead down the back stretch. He's to the inside, the 66 of Nonagan Scott. Sierra, the nice push on the inside. Gets inside and beneath the 66 and flies around. Brett Sierra to the front in Darlington. Cresswell, the 20, moving for second on Nottingham Scott as the pack, two by two behind. John three for an 18, comes in second, and punch jumps down to the bottom. Trying to move forward as the inside, definitely the place to be here at Darlington. Cresswell clears in second, Charles Block clears in third. Sprojo, a throwback to his rookie season in season four. Sprojo up to fourth in the 22. Looking for that's going to bring him some success and trying to make it back into the postseason in the Gatorade Cup Series. He's had a great season so far and looking for a nice points night to ensure his spot inside the top 10 and points he's moving for third on draw one in turn one and he has behind him points leader Max Anderson. With how the points have gone this season I don't know if I would bet on Max Anderson leaving tonight as the points leader. He is surrounded by John DeBeeford and the guy in third in points so watch out for that to maybe Come into play later tonight. Anderson only has seven points up on Beaufort, only 13 up on the 13th, Anthony Hernandez. The bow for second is on. Sproach to the outside, points leader Max Anderson inside. Brett Sierra continues to lead in the 24 car, but a challenge there off turn two by Max Anderson. 
Anderson beneath the 20 for the first challenge. Sierra's had all night long. And it's in forms of the point seater, Max Anderson. 43 to the inside, and we'll get around. Anderson now in front now with Darlington. Second place now, Ross McTrain. He'll get clear in second. Sierra's teammate Eli Bright moves up to third, and behind him, Jonathan Buford up to fourth. The 18 Buford comes in second and points. Only seven behind the man who leads right now. Also moving up on the inside to Tony Stewart. Throwbacks. So you have throwback to the 2011 championship for Marsha Burrell, and right behind him, last win in this paint scheme, Brandon Beal. Tony Stewart's last win in Sonoma 2016. Beal up to fifth with that car. Max Anderson leads in the 43, but now first and second on the tracker. First and second in points. Max Anderson leads. He's current the points leader in second. John Thieford second in points, but they're going to swap the position off turn two. John Thieford wants to also lead lap because leading lap gets you five bonus points. So Anderson got those five points. Now Thieford wants them as well. He might not get them because he goes wide. Here comes Burl to the inside. It's a drag race, the lead, the lap here in Darlington. It will be Burl to steal it from Beaufort on the inside. Harrison might try and get back down in line right there in front of the 52 to level, but couldn't. There might be three wide here through one and two. The 18 gets in front of the 43. Here come two Rick Ware cars to Lello and Rando on the inside. That Jimmy Johnson throwback, Jay Rando. Beaufort tried to get low in third, but couldn't. Field looks on Burrow for the racing. The two Tony Stewart cars going at here at Darlington. Eight laps complete. Field to the inside to charge one and two. The preferred lane, and he'll take it away easily. Field out front to level now, up to second. Bringing teammate Jay Rando to third. DeLello looking for the lead down the back, but Field able to clear as they're two by two behind him. Field sides up to level, sides up to the bomb for Jay Rando for second. They battle for three and four. This race oh so important to many of the drivers running at the front. As after tonight, only two races remain until we get to the postseason. Bristol on dirt in Atlanta. Some crazy racetracks to end out the regular season here in the Gatorade Cup Series, and they'll get even crazier once we get to the postseason. Brandon moves out in front. Wiley Vendor and Jeff Bright moves up to second. Bright dominated the Target Series race at Myrtle Beach, leading every lap around to Victory Lane. He's looking for another Gatorade Cup Series win in that nine car. He moves low on Randall, gets by into turn one. Jeff Bright leads in the Southern 500 at Darlington. He led that lap as well by maybe a few one thousandths of a second. Baird moves up to second. Greg Biffle throw back to his rookie season. Find him in third. Now against Scott Stewart on pulling and moves back up. You have Jake Gow in the Darrell Walter throwback, moving up to fourth in the 11. And to fifth goes Cody Ayers and Anthony Hernandez. Throw back to Dale Senior's Tasmanian Devil Car. That 13 moves up on the inside, up to sixth. Came in third and points, only 13 behind the front two. As Baird moves out in front in the 77 1 at Road America, looking for another Gatorade Cup Series win. And here comes Luke Rennie. Throw back to Brad Kozlowski's 2009 paint scheme where he went Talladega with. Baird may have gotten the wall through three and four, and flying around goes all-star winner Jake Galloway. Locked into the postseason, the only man who can say that at this point in the season, it's crazy to think. Three races until we get to the postseason, the point series not even locked in yet. That's how close the points have been so far this season. Galloway, the only man locked in. He's now challenged by his Toyota teammate, Cody Anderson. Anderson to the inside, looking to try and get it into turns three and four, and will bringing third and points, Anthony Hernandez. Luke Rain the two as well. There goes Hernandez for the lead, so the third team might get five bonus points as well. Remember our points here did get that Max Anderson. John Thiefer has not yet led a lap, but now Hernandez has as well. So first and third points get those five points, but second and points Buford is not. Bring up to second. Draw Bois back up to third. Randall looking for fourth. Eli Bright also on the inside the 88. They have DeLello, Sproti coming back. Brandon Beal as well. Max Ross the 81. And then coming up to the front, Griffin Lynn. A throwback ride to his rookie season back in season three. What a Gatorade Cup Series career it has been as Luke Green was the lead. What a Gatorade Cup Series career has been for Griffin Lynn. A championship in season six battle with one of the best Levi Jones to do it and outing Jones' chances of a championship that season. Jones later got her in season nine, but what a career it's been for Griffin Lynn. It's not been the final season he's wanted at all. However, while, he not, while he's definitely not gonna make the postseason in this season, he can always go for a win and a Southern 500 trophy would be just huge for Griffin Lynn in this final season. And there's still 40 to go, so lots of time left. Lynn now up inside the top 10, moving by Anthony Hernandez. For the lead, Charlois had it. Now Jay Reynolds gonna take it down the back stretch. Card number 53 moves out in front. 
Randall to the lead. Eli Bright moves up to second. Now Eli Bright for the lead off turn number four. Luke Brady with him, but Randall, the power down on corner, exit the 53, leads at the start finish line, but doesn't have the preferred lane to turn one. That's Eli Bright's lane. Eli moves out in front. Luke Rain back to the second. The level back up to third. Frozen for fourth. And Brandon Beal looking back for the top five in the 62 car. Another uh, Daryl Waltrip throwback. You can see it just like Jake Gowies. That's Roman Fenway's in the 17. In fact, they're running just a few cars in front of the racetrack. 17 is on the bottom. The 11 on the bottom. Just two cars behind him as Luke Rain moves out in front of the two. Back to the field. See some more throwbacks. There's Levi Shones in the 12. The 20 Riley Cresswell. Beaver we saw before, Sierra as well. Sampson's throwback in the 38. Jeff Wright just behind him. Evan Hunter, the first time we see that car all night long. Hunter up inside the top half of the field. Cole Luigi moving by Anthony Hernandez. Luigi started outside pole, but fell back early on. Some three wide contact there between John Smith and Nathan Baird. Some close calls. TJ Lee in a throwback to his own truck. Think about pencil trucks or his truck. No, just normal everyday truck. Throwback to that. Ford F-150, Logan Williams, you have Cameron Evans, and the th throwback to uh, Dale Jr.'s 2016 Tax Slayer car, which he piloted in one race, the 2016 Clash. I have a Dale Jr. throwback to the 32, you have Jay Jefferson and Martin Church Jr. Championship throwback in the Bush Series, you have Colin Teague, that's the car that Griffin drove to the championship in Season 6. Teague right now at the back of the field looking to try and move his way forward to get up there and try and challenge for the lead. Kuglan's throwback, Scott Gregory, Zydell, Anderson's back here, Lynn is back here. So a lot of the big names in terms of the championship, in terms of the points lead, they're back here. Right, once again, see the points there switch after a race with Buford running strong in the 18, currently up inside the top half dozen. For the lead, Max Rossi, one of the few cars without a throwback here tonight. Rossi moves up to the lead. Cody Anderson back up to second. Charles Bond, another car without a throwback in third. Schultz, he's been all night, moves up to fourth. Hasn't won since this championship season. Just remember that. Schultz right now fourth. And for the 18 moves up to fifth. Here Sampson moving forward. You have the teammates of Bright and Sierra. Jeff Bright, that is, moving up on the inside. As two Toyotas break away. In fact, front four right now, Toyotas. As you have Anderson leading. Charles Bond second. Now B for third. Rossi fourth. But he'll lose it to Sampson, who moves a Ford up inside the top five. A Chevy inside the top five. For the lead goes Anson and Charles Bond to turn three and four. The 96 looking on the 95 and will easily take a Buford hits the 95 off the track. And Jonathan moves through to second with all that, but a close call there inside the front three. It's getting a little intense here. We're nearing the midway point of this race. It's flown by so far. We've been caution free so far, but the intensity level definitely ramping up because once these stars start to wear out, it's going to be a lot harder to make passes. It's still going to be possible, but it's going to be hard. It's going to take you more time. So as you can see, the pack already spreading up because of that tire wear. It's going to become a little bit more difficult to make these passes work. Cody Harris up the racetrack. Who's inside goes Max Rossi at the front. Second of points, Beefer looks to take the points lead back in the 18. He's had such a great string of races ever since go back to Kansas. He performed really, really well there. And ever since then, it's been just lights out for the 18 team. They have gone a great ways this season and looking to get back-to-back -back championships for Joe Gibbs. Trey Rainey doing it last season. Beaufort has taken over the helm of the 18 and has done a superb job doing it. Beaufort has been outstanding this season. Many top fives, many top tens up inside the top three in points and looking to try and get to the points in after tonight as he's currently leading in the Southern 500 in Darlington. But challenged there by Riley Sampson to the end of the 38. And here comes Jeff Brake and challenged by Jimmy Brett Sierra. Just behind them, looks like a tender car, but it's just Jay Randall and a Jimmy Johnson throwback. Brando inside the top five, behind the two Hendrick cars that are side by side, and Sampson moves through to the lead. Sierra moves through to second. Remember, he's never won a Gatorade Cup Series race. In fact, he only has one win across the top three division. That's the Target Series back in his championship season. One at Michigan. Hasn't won a race since then. Riley Cresswell moving forward. Toyota's been really, really outstanding this season. And once again, they're showing it with how well they're running. As many of their cars are running up here. You have Charles Bois has led laps. Cresswell moving up now. Beaufort's led laps. Jake Gow has led. Cody Anderson has led. So it's been a really, really good night once again for Toyota. But currently, a Ford and a Chevy lead the way. In fact, the front three three different manufacturers. A Ford leads, a Chevy in second, and then a Toyota in third, but here we go. Sierra for the lead, and that's bringing Sharp on the others back into it. Brett Sierra wants to lead here in Darlington halfway next time by in the Southern 500. Caution-free throughout the first half. 
However, crazy racing and crazy moments. A big shot for the lead right there. Charles moved and cleared Sierra by the time they got to the start finish line. It was a really, really good run for Anson and Charles Now Sierra's up the racetrack. Cresswell trying to fill the hole to the inside, but couldn't because Brandon Beal filled the hole to the inside of the 20. Beal for third. Names start to come to the front that we haven't really mentioned. Cole Luigi started outside pool in this race. Fell back around that because he started on the outside. But Luigi now back inside the top 10, the 42. Methodically working to the front. He's never won a Southern 500. There are two races Cole Luigi would love to win. The Daytona 500 and the Southern 500. That's basically the only thing he hasn't done in any of the series. Brett Sierra for the lead in Darlington. Charles Blanc at the halfway point of this race, but Sierra wants to lead the next lap. The 24 is inside and by the 96. Sierra back out in front of Darlington. Field is second, Schoen's the third. Charles Blanc back to fourth. Zachary DeLello right now in fifth. They have McTrain in sixth. Luigi up to seventh. The for eighth. Polster now that Scott moving by Marsh Burrow. So Scott to eighth, to ninth for Max Rossi. Burrow back to tenth and might be challenged by his teammate John Smith. Buford fell back outside the top 15, but now Methonkly back on the inside, moving back forward to the 18. Buford up inside the top 15 again. Yes, others trying to move their way forward first. And we mentioned Derek Hill's name inside the top 20 all night long. Hamill moving forward, he's in front of Luke Green, who's leading early on, but now Luke has fallen back outside the top 20. Cameron Evans moving up. High has been all night long. Evans right now in at the 25th position. Griffin Lynn still hanging around the top 20, along with Jeff Wright. Jay Jefferson, first time he's been top 15 all night long. And Colin Teague moving up in the 51. Sierra leads into turns three and four, but now he's challenged by Brandon Beal. The 62 moves inside, and Beal moves around. He's out front of the 62. And Levi Schultz moves up to second in the 12. Schultz looking for another Gatorade Cup Series win. How special would it be if he can get down the Southern 500 for the first time since he won the Brickyard 400 back in season number nine? An outstanding Gatorade Cup Series career and might be nearing the end. Who knows of his career, but I'm sure he has a lot left in him and he'd love to get another win. It's been a long time since he's done it. Season 9 and season 13. It's been basically four seasons now. Shones leads the Southern 500 at Darlington. DeLello up in second. Third place is Ross McTrain. Then Anson and Charles Bly is fourth. Max Rossi for fifth. Being pushed by Marshall Burrow and John Sweeford back up. Colin Teague now joining the front in the 51 in that Griffin Lynn throwback. Griffin Lynn throwing back to himself, also moving up inside the top 15 once again, the 36. Raspberry to also throw back to himself inside the top 20 and still with a shot at it. They're all trying to run down the race leader though. That is Zach DeLello. He shuffled Levi Shones out. Ross McTrain in second. Anson and Trouble on third. McTrain for the lead down the back stretch. For a win for Stewart Haas racing this season. Ross McTrain was out in front of the 10. Anson and Charles Blanc to second now. And here comes Max Rossi trying to get beneath Zach DeLello to move to third. Right now at the front. As they go through one and two, the front four. You have two Toyotas and two Stewart Haas Fords. And you have DeLello in fifth. But here comes Colin Teague, DeLello's teammate. Up to six for the 51. But now he's challenged to the inside by the nine of Jeff Bright. And here comes Griffin Lynn as well. Lynn inside the top 10. Maybe this is the point of the race where you want to start charging now. We're coming around to 20 to go, and the pack's starting to split out. Maybe this is where you can move to the front, fall back, and not lose too many positions. McTrain leads to turn one, but now challenge Anson and Charles Blanc to the inside. The 96 moves out in front. Cross in the second. Third place for Burrow. DeLello on the inside with Jeff Bray and Griffin Lynn. They pulled away from the pack behind Nottingham Scott, trying to catch and then side by side between Buford and the 51 of Teague. Sierra and Luigi and Jefferson also watching that. As Teague moves out, Buford clears Sierra now to the inside. Hamill inside the top 15 for the first time tonight. Luke Green moving back in the two after leading early on. You have Zydell moving forward. You have the 17 of Fenway. Riley Spruce is still stuck back around mid-pack. Keegan Thompson first time mentioned the 48 all night long. He's trying to move up at the right time, but under 20 to go. Time is running out if you're back behind the front 10. Rossi out from the 81, shuffling. The previous leader of Anson Charles side. Burrow to second, DeLello to third, the battle for fourth. Jeff Bright has it, Griffin then to the inside. Watch it, yellow is out. Caution, we'll have a restart. Shones is demolished with Minnick and Rando. Spurridge as well is involved. They're still wrecking under the yellow. It was Evans and Hunter and Ruiz all rubbing together. Kukulon back there as well, and we'll have a restart. Beal involved alone, with, I think that's points to Max Anderson. 
This is just a season where you do not want to be leading the points. Yellow flag is out under 20 to go with Lever Research under 15 to go. And a terrible crash for a lot of cars in this field. And it's going to take a few out. And some big names that we were mentioning, they're involved. It was Levi Schultz who took the worst of it. The 12 upside down in turns three and four. Let's go see what happened. This pack was racing aggressively and it was up at the front. So you knew if it was going to happen somewhere at the front, it was going to collect a lot of race cars with how narrow this track is. And that's exactly what happened. Levi Schultz on the outside is Idell and Fenway. Beal just behind him. Spur to just behind them. And as they go through three and four, it looks like Schultz going to get too high here. Maybe trying to give the 41 some room. They'll catch the wall and send him upside down. Beal and Spur to nowhere to go. They run right into it. Schultz now on the wall. Randall runs into it, nowhere to go. Hanley and Galway clip off each other. Now the 12 flips down the racetrack. Minnick far behind, and he just clobbers the undercarriage of the 12 and sends him into a terrible, terrible, just spinning kind of torpedo right there. That is insane. As Minnick was so far behind, he was in the gas committed, and Schultz came right down to his path, but really nowhere if you're nowhere for the people on the outside to go like Beal and Sproge and Rando they're committed and you can't just let out the gas with how narrow this racetrack is you know it's just kind of very very hard to do a lot of drivers did a great job getting low but Rando just couldn't go low and right there that was a sledgehammer hit for Minnick and Deshones I do want to see what happened right here with like the eight of them Max Erickson as well because it looks like they, they were still not really done so Right here, did all these guys miss this? The question. Well, Anderson got some hit, some damage right there with the 12, but now they're racing back around to the yellow. There are damaged cars here. Beal and Spur, too, but they're now three wide with Ruiz, Hunter, and Evans. They're all hitting together. They're all slamming. They luckily saved their cars. Keep going straight. Ruiz will have some right side damage on that double zero machine. And I think Anderson, that little contact he had with uh, Levi Schoen, will send a trip to pit road for the 43. It looks like it looks like he was slower and possibly had some issues with that car. So back around to our first yellow flag here in the Southern 500. Marshall Burrow leads the way in that 2011 Tony Stewart throwback, but a lot of hungry drivers back behind him looking to win in the Gatorade Cup Series. Marshall Burrow leads the 13th Southern 500 here at Darlington. Green flag will be displayed this time by. It'll be with under 15 laps to go, 14 at the line when we get the restart. The cars out front to make Levi Schoen's Brandon Beal, Jay Rando, and Riley Sproley Tube. We have 37 cars left running. Max Aronson, the last of them, is one lap down. The 43 has just been not the season to lead points. Whoever's been the points here seemed to have had terrible luck the next race. Aronson, once again, got back on top in points in front of Buford and in front of Hernandez. He'll possibly likely leave third or worse as Hernandez runs in 25th, but most importantly, Jonathan Buford runs up inside the top 10 in 9th. So the race leader is Marshall Burrell, Zachary Delello in second. They have Jeff Bright in third, Max Rossi fourth, Griffin Lynn in fifth. They have Anson and Charbonne sixth, Ross McTrain seventh, Pulse here, Nonagan Scott in eighth, John Weaver in ninth, and Brett Sierra up inside the top ten. No kind of Jefferson, Hamill, Rainey, Teague, or Luigi. They're inside the top fifteen. We're back going in Darlington. A nice jump for Burrell. In second place, Delello, he spun the tires. Okay, Buford in ninth also spun the tires. But Burrow, really good restart in the 14. Now they battle for second. Jeff Bright tried to pull out. The battle for fourth is on. Lynn is looking low on Rossi. Lynn does not care about a point situation. He only wants to win in his final season. He has to back on the pass of Rossi, though. Has to cancel that out. As they try to run down the 14 to Burrow. 13 laps to go at Darlington. Track position can be so important with these tires starting to wear out. Now heat cycles on the tires as well. For the lead goes DeLello in one and two. Car 52 out in front now off two. Hamill got by Sierra who quickly got back in line. Randy just behind them along with Colin Teague. But it's DeLello Teague's teammate leading the way. He goes wide but gets by. Jeff Bright moves to second. Rossi to third. Here comes Lynn for fourth in the 36. A dozen laps left. 12 to go in Darlington. Lynn to fourth. Shaw off for fifth in the 96. Here comes McTrain on his teammate. McTrain to sixth place. Scott the pole sitter. First time he's been at the front since the initial start of the race. Scott moving up for a top dozen spot. Top half dozen, excuse me. And Jonathan Buford trying to get back to the points of the 18. 
The point series a lap down. Third in points, Hernandez is back outside the top 20. Buford now up inside the top 10 and can try and get the points lead back. Hamill the first time, he's been top 10 all night. Kinsira and Randy trying to get back up to the front. How about Cody Richard second? He's moving forward in the 42. But can they get back to Lelo who's led since the second lap of the restart? Scott for fifth, the pole sitter flying around McTrain. And Jeff Bright peeking out to Lelo, got the run that time into turn one. Bright with 10 to go, moves out in front of Darlington. Remember he won yesterday in the target series at Myrtle Beach. He's now leading in the Southern 500 at Darlington, but he's challenged by Max Rossi and Griffin Lynn is with the 81. 81 had to abandon that though, and Lynn might lose third to Nonagon Scott. The 66 is flying now. The pole sitter is flying back to the front. He's up to third with under 10 to go. Is that Lynn shot now done? He's on the outside, he has to try and find a way in line, maybe in front of Hamill and behind Buford. This might be his best shot to get in line. We'll see if he can get it done. Hamill's give a run though off two right there. Jeff Bright continues to lead. Scott up to second now in the 66. Flying up onto the back of Jeff Bright. The pole series car is working well when it needs to most. Eight to go. Not against Scott's pressuring Jeff Bright. And I believe, is that a lap car? Yeah, Max Erickson is so severely off the pace. We're going to catch him in a hurry here. And this is going to impact everything about this race. It's going to happen this time by. At the line, seven to go. But the biggest factor is going to be this lap car. Scott and others trying to clear. So they have free roam around Max Anderson. Scott goes to the bottom, filtering through the front few do. Front five, get by. Bright and six will get low. The inside, definitely the place to be at this stage in the race. And the outside halted. The front few get around, but the rest of the pack stuck at the front. Scott leads, but he's challenged by Anson and Charlebois. Five cars break away. Sierra the last of them. Sixth place Bright. Seventh place Rainey. Luigi in eighth. Zydell in ninth. And Samson in tenth. All trying to latch onto the front five, and they will. Five laps to go in Darlington. Excuse me, six to go in Darlington. Anson and Charlebois leads. John Buford looking for another win. Up to second. And looking for the points in as well. Brett Sierra's never won in the Gatorade Cup Series. He's going for third in the 24. Bringing Derek Hill to the inside of the 32. Luke Rainey looking for a crown jewel win. Coltrucci's never won the Southern 500. They all have five laps to go. Anson and Trouba leads it. Ten cars to settle the Southern 500. Riley Sampson, the 38, is the last of them. Jonathan Buford for the lead in the 18. Down the back stretch. These are some big names at the front. Charles Bois, Buford. You have Sierra and Rainey and Luigi. But it's Buford leading them around. Four to go. Jeff Bright. Don't count him out the back of this pack. Don't count the pulls here. Not against Scott. Don't count the man in third. Luke Rainey is charging onto the back of the front two. Sierra's going to have to make the move sooner rather than later because Luke Rainey will make it first for sure. Three laps at the line is all that's left. Rainey getting impatient in third. He wants Sierra to go, but Sierra's not close enough to go. Three laps remain in the Southern 500. Sierra, is he there? They might be three wide through one and two for the lead. They will be three wide. Luke Gray forces inside of Sierra. They may be beating a bang down the back. Sierra trying to clear it and will. The 24 now out front. Oh, they're gonna be three wide. Randy messed it up. Buford got put into the wall because of that. Sierra pulls away their side by side for a second. The yellow is out. Brett Sierra back around. He might win this race. A terrible crash. All four. Evans, the eight. The ten of McTrain. Evan Hunter. Griffin Lynn. Roman Fenway. This race is over. And Brett Sierra might win his first ever Gatorade Cup Series race. And it will come in the Southern 500 at Darlington. An unbelievable ending. Sierra, it looks like it's going to get it done. Luke Rainey, the points that he need in second. Same could be said for Coluigi in third. John Thabiford, definitely the points leader in fourth. Zydell will get fifth. Sampson, Scott, Charles Bois, Bright, Hamill, the front ten. But a crash with two to go. The yellow is displayed. This race is over. It looks like it was a pretty big one towards the back of the field. Max Anderson going to get 37th, maybe even better, as 
Look at some of the damaged cars. The white flag is shown for Brett Sierra. One more time around Darlington, and he will win the Southern 500, his first ever win in the Gatorade Cup Series. He's never won before. Coasting through one and two, obviously 45 mile an hour pace, but it's gonna take a while to get around for Brett Sierra, and this might be the longest lap of Sierra's life, that's for sure. When he won the Target Series, it was under the green flag. That slow 45 mile an hour pace speed, you're definitely hearing stuff at this point, the sand on the racetrack, you're hearing that under your tires, you're hearing every little noise, and you're hoping that that car can just stay under power to get back around half a lap to win this race. It's been a struggle of a career in the Gatorade Cup Series where Brett Sierra's rookie season was nothing to write home about, nothing to do anything about. In fact, there were many times where he was leading late in races, but issues on what was the 99 car they drove for or just passed a late at points. He was the final lead change in the race. This season, Hendrick Motorsports has had nothing to show for. They have the win in Keegan Thompson in Texas World. Jeff Bright has performed decent. Eli Bright almost won the Pepsi 600. But Brett Sierra will come off four and be the second Hendrick driver to win this season. Thompson did it back in Texas World. Sierra is gonna do it in one of the biggest races of the season. The checker flag is out in the Southern 500 and Brett Sierra at long last is a Gatorade Cup Series winner over Luke Rennie, Coluigi, John Thiefer. Those are some huge names that finished right behind Brett Sierra. Before we go see the finish results, let's go see we happen to end this race under yellow. It looked like many cars involved, including the 17 of Roman Fenway. We've seen this before. It kind of rings back what happened to Zachary DeLello a few seasons ago in the 16. Marshall Burrow is racing outside of Logan Williams. This is a battle for 11. So once again, it happens at the front of the field. The wall will grab, catch the 14, upside down for Burrow. And now here's where it gets ugly. He's on his lid, sliding, still sliding. It'll come down the banking naturally. Conrad Evans will clip him in the... Oh, he landed on Fenway. Oh my gosh, the 14. We saw cars go underneath him, but he landed on that 17 of Roman Fenway. And then at the end, Griffin then got into it, into someone else, but... My goodness. We saw the roof damage on the 17. I thought he was the one that actually had this happen to him, but it was Burrow who then got hit by Evans into the air like we saw with Lelo, but what we did see with Lelo was... A land on a car right on Fenway. I mentioned how those those Roush cars somehow find a way to always be near each other. It happened again. Both those cars were near this crash. Look at Ross McTrain. What he does here. Underneath the 17, but he gets collected with the the 8 there. And right here, Fenway hit by Lynn. That was a scary, scary crash. Let's go on board with Ross McTrain as he goes underneath his teammate, Marshall Burrell. The car behind him gets landed on top of that's, that's not something you want to see, especially if it's your teammate. And he's very fortunate that he wasn't the one that got landed on. Unfortunately for Fenway, it was him. This ends the race. One lap short, Brett Sierra wins in the 24 for his first ever Gatorade Cup Series win. Let's go see the finish results and the point standings hang into the final two races of the regular season. Here is how they finish in the Southern 500 at the Darlington Raceway. Two caution flags tonight for six laps and thir 32 lead changes, excuse me, among 18 different drivers. Winning the race, Brett Sierra ties for the most laps led in the 24, winning his first ever Gatorade Cup Series race. Luke Rainey ends up in second, a great point standings now up inside the top five in points and with some good race tracks for him ahead. Coluigi in third, what he needed for points as well. John Thiefer now the new points leader in fourth, and Justin Zidell finishes inside the top five of the 41. Finishing in sixth for Riley Sampson, Nonagan Scott from pole ends up in seventh, Anson and Charbot also led eight laps, ends up in eighth. Jeff Brett led four laps, gets ninth, and Derek Kimmel the 32 completes the top 10. Logan Williams 11th, Nathan Baird in 12th. Williams started last in this race, so a good run for him. Osgin, Eli Bright, Smith the top 15. They have Jefferson, Hernandez, Galloway, Rossi, and Anderson. They're all the top 20. As you look down, 31 cars finished on the lead lap. 32nd McTrain out because of a piston. Griffin also out. Max Anderson running but finished two laps down 34th. 
Marshboro also tied for the most upside of eight, ends up in 35th. They have Evans, Fenway, Spro, to Randall, Beal, Shones, and Minnick also retired from crashes. Let's now go see the port standings with two races left in the regular season. 20 races into the Gatorade Cup Series season. Here are the point standings, two races left in the regular season. John to be for the 18, on top now in points. Eight top five, nine top 10 has been outstanding for Beaver this season. He has a 54 point gap over Anthony Hernandez, who ends up second in points. Max Anderson down to third in points, and now he has not finished every lap this season. He was the one entering this race that finished every lap. He now two laps down this race. He's completed all but two laps this season. And Luke Rainey up now into the battle to try and get to the points. See, he's right now fourth in points, and he has Bristol Dirt ahead for him. That's a really good track for him. Donegan Scott now 5th in points, Caden Lynn is 6th, Anson Atrabaugh is 7th, Bibby Rue is 8th, Riley Sampson 9th, and Riley Sprout who completes the top 10 in the 22. Right now, Jake Galloway a wildcard spot, and the second one will go to Ko Luigi, but it is a close battle, as you have many one-time winners just inside the top 10. Anson Atrabaugh, Bibby Rue is, Riley Sampson, Riley Sprout the two. You have Nathan Baird in 14th with one win. They have Koluigi, TJ, and they both with two victories along with Max Rossi. They're battling for that wild card spot. And you have Fenway as well in that mix. If he gets another win in these final two races, that's going to be a big race to try and get that last wild card spot, which Jake Gow is going to hold for sure. I don't see a way of him getting inside the top 10 in points. So you have to think that if you're going to make it into the chase based on a wild card spot, you're going to have to have two wins or even three victories. Which right now, Koluigi, TJ Hanley do have along with Max Rossi. It's a very close race. Hanley's only 5 behind Luigi, and Rossi's only 12 behind him. So that's very, very close there. Don't count out drivers down here like Marshall Burrow possibly get another win. Samet Osgin. Maybe Jeff Bright can try and do something with Derek Kimmel and Riley Cresswell. But down here, if you're down low, below the top 30, your chance is basically over. And Brett Sierra, that first win of his career, moves up to 36th in points. While it's not a chase contending position, that win has to make Sierra feel very, very confident entering the final 12 races of the Gatorade Cup Series season. Looking forward to the next one. We're going to go dirt racing as we go to Bristol for the Sharpie Dirt 500. I'll see you guys then.